on Monday, February 17th, 2003, the Antwerp Diamond Police walked into a vault that was two floors underground the Diamond District and discovered that thieves had broken into a vault that had 10 layers of security and they had systematically disabled each one and made off with an estimated 100 million euros worth of diamonds. To me, what's so amazing about this story is that these thieves were the cream of the crop. They were from Italy, they were extremely accomplished, they were at the top of their game. And yet, as they drove out of town, they pulled off the road and threw a bag of garbage out the window into a forested area beside the freeway. Uh, they didn't burn it, it was just scattered in the underbrush and they left. And it just so happened that this little piece of forest was owned by a retired grocer who had made it his life work in retirement to try to prevent littering and improve nature. And for him, the garbage was just a huge insult to everything he was trying to do with his retirement. And so he would regularly call the cops when he would find garbage on his land and say, you know, oh, there's, there's some beer bottles, or there's this, or there's that. And the police were like, yeah, yes, thank you, Mr. Van Kamp. But this time, this Monday morning, Mr. Van Kamp found this garbage, and it was unusual garbage. It wasn't, you know, the typical beer bottles and, and wine bottles, though those things were there, but there were also diamonds in the mud. And within uh, an hour, the area was swarmed with cops. The alleged mastermind of the operation was a man named Leonardo Notabartolo, who, uh, his specialty was charm. Uh, Leonardo uh, Notabartolo says he's always been a thief. He was born to be a thief. He made, he, his first robbery, he was six years old. I started following this story six years ago in 2003. I was in Antwerp at the time uh, reporting another story about diamonds. And it was while I was there that I heard about this heist. I was there maybe two or three months after it had occurred. And I thought, wow, that's an amazing story and I would love to know what really happened. Uh, and so I got in touch with Nota Bartolo first with his lawyer, uh, in Belgium, and then I also started sending him letters in prison. Uh, and one day, uh, I received a phone call at home here in California, and it was Leonardo Nota Bartolo calling me after six years. There were four people who were arrested, charged, and convicted with the crime. Uh, according to Nota Bartolo, there were five people. He refuses to say uh, who these people were, but he uses their nicknames. Uh, there was the man he refers to as the genius, a guy who could disable any surveillance system, any kind of alarm. This guy was your man. There was a man named the Monster, who was monstrously talented. He was basically uh, an all-around Olympian of thieves. The third guy was a man named the King of Keys, kind of self-explanatory. And the fourth uh, man on the team, not counting Nota Bartolo, was known as Speedy. And Speedy was an old friend of Nota Bartolo's. They'd grown up together, and the others on the team didn't want him. He started to have anxiety problems. But Nota Bartolo thought that this was the job of a lifetime, and if they were going to make the biggest score of their life, he couldn't really say to his old, oldest and closest friend, no, you're not in on this. Unfortunately, it was Speedy who had a panic attack as they were driving out of Antwerp after the heist, and it was his insistence that they pull off the road and immediately get rid of the garbage uh, that explains why the garbage ended up on Von Kamp's land. It was never no to Bartolo's intention to do that. It was a mistake. It was a reaction to his friend's meltdown. Uh, no to Bartolo always planned to drive the garbage to France and burn it in an abandoned warehouse. If he had done that, it's possible that the heist would never have been solved.